There's a new track weapon out of South Korea, Hyundai's Ionic 6N, which will finally give America some proper competition for the Tesla Model 3 performance, a car I'm intimately familiar with as I've driven one for the past seven years. Honestly though, I've been ready for something different, but there's a problem. There aren't any other cars in this segment. High performance, all-wheel drive, electric mid-size sedans, without the lofty price tag of the more bonkers EV performers out there, not to mention a community of enthusiasts with the most balanced and rational opinions, this is pretty much all there is. And you might say the Polestar 2 Performance Pack or BMW i4 M50 deserve a mention in this category. But the Polestar 2 is no longer sold in the US thanks to tariffs, and the BMW costs 15k more than the Tesla, yet still doesn't match the performance, and it weighs a thousand pounds more. The Model 3 performance really has been in a league of its own for the past seven years, but that all changes now thanks to the 2026 Hyundai Ioniq 6N. I was fortunate enough to drive a prototype of this car at Hyundai's development center in South Korea, and it's an absolute riot. Now, it's not perfect, we'll get into that, but driving it hard led me to believe Hyundai's claim about what the number one priority was for this vehicle, creating a driving experience that's as heart pumping as spinning in your office chair. Oh, sorry, read that wrong. Genuinely, the number one focus is racetrack capability. Sacrifices have been made so that this thing is an incredible experience to drive hard. Here's an obvious example. Massive 275 millimeter wide tires not only in the back like the Model 3 Performance, but also up front. A wide, square setup that makes keeping spares and rotating tires a breeze, while offering relentless cornering grip on track. But of course, wide tires come with a range penalty, an increased aerodynamic drag. Another example, the 6N is a wider car than the standard Ionic 6, by 60 millimeters, bumping the fenders out 30 millimeters on each side for a more aggressive stance, of course coming with a hit on aerodynamics. There's even a rear wing that's said to produce 100 kilograms of downforce at 250 kilometers per hour. For my American viewers, that's about the weight of nearly 9,000 Oreo cookies. Fairly low downforce numbers, but keeping the aerodynamic sleek is obviously important, so the fact there's any wing at all is testament to the track focus. While the standard Ionic 6 has a very low drag coefficient at around 0.21, the 6N bumps this up to 0.27. This is a significant aero improvement over the Ionic 5N, which has a drag coefficient of 0.31 and is 90 millimeters taller than the 6N, so the 6 should have a meaningful range improvement over the 5's 221 miles. The powertrain should be nearly identical to the 5N in, so that means two electric motors, one up front and one in the back for all-wheel drive, with a genuine electronic limited slip diff in the rear for improving traction, corner exit, and the ability for lighting up both rear tires for smoky drifts. 640 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque from an 84 kilowatt hour battery pack, expect to see the true 0 to 60 in the very low threes, and should any of the specs differ from what I learned on site at the prototype drive, I'll include a full list of specs as a pinned comment once the final numbers are confirmed. Now, one of the things that has plagued performance EVs is motor D-rate. The battery gets hot from pushing hard, and since EV cooling systems are often optimized for efficiency rather than performance, the power curve drops to keep the battery temps in check, and the cars get sluggish. But just like with the 5N, the 6N has been developed to sustain two full power Nurburgring laps without any D-rate, so the cooling system is genuinely designed to handle full performance consistently. And not to brag, but personally I can jog two full laps around my local Burger King before I start overheating. But there's another, less obvious benefit to the better cooling system, and that's higher regen capabilities. Most electric cars won't use regen braking to slow the vehicle down above about 0.2 to 0.3 Gs. On top of that, some vehicles further reduce regen on track because it heats up the battery. Hyundai, like on the Ionic 5N, can crank regen braking up to 0.6 Gs. So their improved cooling system means they can regenerate more energy on track, improving efficiency. And even during a full ABS panic stop, the system is still putting 0.2 Gs worth of regen back into the battery. 
Now as far as track upgrades versus the Ionic 5N, there's a healthy list of improvements put in place with the 6N. First up, they've selected an entirely new damper for the suspension of the 6N. Sax dampers supplied by ZF, which they claim to be a significant improvement in terms of tuning capability, allowing for an improved ride, but also managing wheel hop from the crazy torque sent to the rear wheels. Indeed, on track, the ride felt great. Those dampers are paired with 30% stiffer springs on the rear axle. Hyundai's vice president of the N Performance arm, June Park, says the 6N is a tamer car than the 5N, but to me it was still quite lively on corner exit. Put the power down too soon and the rear end happily kicks out, while a quick counter steer catches it and you're back on track. It's genuinely a very playful machine, with loads of grip despite the weight. On that subject, the weight is a bit of a disappointment. An engineer mentioned it's only 30 kilograms lighter than the Ionic 5N. That puts it just shy of about 4,800 pounds, which, uh, relatable. But personally, I feel this is just too much weight for a performance vehicle. If I'm being honest though, it masks the weight incredibly well. I actually assumed the weight drop was significantly greater versus the 5N based on driving it until being told they were similar. It doesn't drive like it weighs as much as it does, but of course range and tire wear will always be a quick reality check on a vehicle's weight, especially when driving hard. Getting back to suspension changes, not only did they swap out springs and dampers, but the roll center has actually been lowered relative to the center of gravity. This means you get more pronounced body roll, but it also changes the behavior of the car. When you corner hard, instead of load transfer occurring more through the chassis and suspension linkages, more of the load transfer actually goes through the springs and roll bars. This means you're able to rely on the suspension for more grip under cornering, and Hyundai says this does improve the mechanical grip of the car. The suspension rework also alters the wheelbase relative to the standard Ionic 6. The 6N has a 15mm longer wheelbase, and this is all done purely through the redesign of the front suspension, pushing the center point of the front wheel 15mm forward. Worth mentioning, because I'm always ready to applaud any manufacturer who downsizes their wheels, these are 20 inches down an inch from the 21 inch wheels standard on the 5N. I've been saying it my whole life and won't stop now, fewer inches is better. And speaking of wheels and tires, they've implemented a new custom tire pressure monitoring system, TPMS, where you, the driver, can select what pressure you want the TPMS sensors to notify you if the tire pressure drops below that level. This is brilliant for track days, because it means if you happen to be airing down your cold tire pressures, you don't have to be annoyed by a finicky TPMS light. That small detail is a fine example of just how customizable this vehicle really is, much like the 5N in comparison to the droves of cars out there, EV or not, that decide what is best for you rather than letting you choose. Whether it's one pedal driving, the amount of regen braking, the steering, motors, electronic limited slip diff, suspension, stability and traction control, what it sounds like, whether it's fake sounds or no sounds at all, everything is customizable to the driver, even the torque distribution front to rear. Which leads into another discussion, because while it's cool that it can mimic things an internal combustion engine car can do, like gear shifts, now with closer gears for more shifting, fuel cutoff, and engine sounds, and to be fair, it does this all in a very believable and realistic manner, but what's more exciting to me is what it can do that combustion vehicles cannot, separating itself as a different option for enthusiasts in the market for something unique. In that regard, two features stand out a soulless driving experience, and bottomless touchscreen menus. I'm kidding! First, end torque distribution. If desired, the driver can set a slider to a specific selection of front or rear torque bias. You can even fully select front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, though with a bit of a catch. While cornering, the vehicle will truly only send power to the selected axle. If, however, you're accelerating in a straight line, both the front and rear motors will get power so that you're not limited in straight line acceleration. Since most combustion cars don't tend to have an engine up front and one in the back, this kind of torque split is basically impossible on most gas cars. But second, the 6N's drift mode has such a clever implementation of regen braking. Put the car in drift mode, accelerate, and all you have to do is back off on the accelerator pedal and suddenly the car uses the rear axle for aggressive regen, effectively like yanking a handbrake, but with no mechanical brakes involved. 
This forces the back end to kick out, and then you simply get back on the throttle, counter steer, and hold the drift. It's one pedal drifting, and it's a beautifully implemented system, which to me feels like a significant improvement over the initial system on the Ionic 5N. And of course, you can change the setting for how much rear regen you get on lifting the throttle, to tune it to your preferences. You can also adjust the angle at which stability control intervenes, if you want it to, to catch any failed attempts at drifting. From the factory, it's tough to think of any all-wheel drive vehicle that has put this much effort towards making drifting this accessible. And from my own experience driving it, it's easily one of the most fun electric cars to drive hard. The front end turns in well. The rear end is happy to kick out if you're too quick onto the throttle. There's loads of grip, and it keeps pulling hard even at higher speeds something that seems to fall off a bit more dramatically in my Model 3 performance. Enthusiasts love parroting the phrase that EVs have no soul, and while I'm yet to find signs of life among any form of mechanical lumps, I still find this phrase to be projection. EVs offer the entire range of human emotion, whether it's rage yelling at yet another broken charging station, or getting completely sideways, grinning ear to ear on a racetrack. If you can't replenish your soul driving this, there's a good chance your emotional maturity peaked while driving a manual Corolla. Wait, but the Ionic 6 certainly isn't perfect. Three complaints stand out. First, it's quite heavy, and while it doesn't feel heavy, weight is the enemy of all things performance, including efficiency, which is critical for EVs. And second, while rare, there were a couple instances on track where the brakes felt a bit uncertain. I noticed this while getting into ABS braking, perhaps something related to the balance between motor regen and mechanical brakes, but it occasionally felt like braking was separated into two different phases. That said, most of the time it was smooth and any brake blending was imperceivable. I'd still put the brake pedal feel ahead of the likes of the Porsche Taycan, but behind that of the purely mechanical pedals of Tesla. And the third complaint, cargo space. Not a huge deal for sports cars, and final numbers haven't been released yet, but the previous Ionic 6 had less than half of the cargo space versus a Model 3, and that's with a small frunk that the 6N doesn't have. Worth mentioning though, the 6 does seem to trade cargo space for passenger space, as it has significantly more rear legroom for the back seats versus the Model 3. Overall, from a performance standpoint, which again is the whole intent behind this car, it's genuinely such an enjoyable drive. Since it isn't built stateside, I really hope it doesn't suffer the same fate as the Polestar 2, because gas or electric, the Ionic 6N offers a uniquely thrilling driving experience for the money, assuming it comes in close to the 5N on price. Admittedly, not every car has to be loved by every person. I mean, my own mother echoes this sentiment in explaining why a whiteboard enthusiast such as myself lacks a social life. But there's genuinely something very special here. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.